Now I'd like to move on to an example of part of speech tagging. Part of speech tagging was selected because by leveraging hidden Markov models, we can describe it in a manner that is similar to a search like Dijkstra's algorithm. Dijkstra's algorithm, I'm sorry. Motivation. Let's say we have a slightly ambiguous English sentence, like time flies like an arrow. We want to translate it into Japanese, but we are uncertain what it means. One source of information we have is looking at the grammatical categories. In other words, the parts of speech of the sentence. For example, if we know that time is a verb, and flies is a noun, and like an arrow is a prepositional phrase, then we have an imperative command to measure the time of flies somehow like an arrow. If we translate this into Japanese, we might get the sentence, Hayo ya no yo ni hakarimasai, which may not make very much sense, but Neither does this interpretation of the English sentence. Another possible interpretation is to assign both time and flies nouns and treat them as a compound noun. That would mean we have some kind of creature that is a fly but somehow related to time, and that that creature displays a preference for arrows. If we were to translate this in Japanese, we might end up with some nonsense like tokibae wa yajirushi yazuki de aru. Of course, this is not a very good translation, but it's a strange interpretation of the sentence. The final and most preferential, preferential analysis of the sentence is to take time as a noun, flies as a verb, and like an arrow as a prepositional phrase. If we do this, we figure out that this is the English proverb, meaning that time flows quickly, and we can thus render in Japanese also like a proverb, uh, with the translation, koin ya no gotoshi. By using correct part of information, I'm sorry, by using correct part of speech information, we are able to eliminate the unlikely candidates. Part of speech information acts as the bedrock for natural language processing. Once we are robustly and accurately able to automatically label text with accurate parts of speech, then we can use that information as a basis for more sophisticated processing, such as syntactic parsing and machine translation. A brief history of part of speech tagging. Until the late 1980s, most part of speech taggers were actually um, created using handcrafted rules. This obviously had issues with coverage and accuracy. However, at that time, large scale corpora started to become available to researchers. And it is not surprising that machine learning techniques became popular in the field of machine translation, I'm sorry, in the field of natural language processing. One of the very first tasks to have um, machine learning applied to it was part of speech tagging, and soon high precision part of speech taggers were trained from corpora with hand tagged um, data. In this presentation, I will describe a hidden Markov model bi bigram tagger for English to illustrate the connection between machine learning and dynamic programming. Hidden Markov model part of speech tagging. First, we'll start with some fundamental definitions. Given a set of tags, T1 through N, and a sequence of words, W1 through N, we want to find the most likely tag set for the sentence T hat 1 through N, which we will find by taking the argmax of the probability of T1 through N given 1, W1 through N. However, because this formula as is is difficult for us to um, measure in a corpus, we use Bayes' rule to turn this into a story of generating words from tags. So we rewrite this so that we have t hat 1 through n be the argmax of t1 through n for the probability of the words given the tags multiplied by the probability of the tags. We call these probability of the words given the tags the likelihood, and the probability of the tags the prior. Applying HMMs. Now that we've been able to rewrite the formula into something that's more manageable, we can represent the tagging problem using a hidden Markov model. And because we've shown in our new formula that t of i only depends on t i minus 1, we can show that it has optimal substructure, and thus we can apply the Viterbi DP uh, search algorithm to tag our sentences. Before we do that, though, we need to provide some hidden Markov model formalization. We will say that we have a part of speech tag set, i.e. a state of sets, and the state of sets will be represented by Q. We will also have a part of speech transition probability matrix that represents the 
probabilities of transitioning from one part of speech to another. This we will represent by the set A. We will also have a sentence of T observations, i.e. English words that we want tagged, that we will represent by the set L. And finally, we will have a sequence of observation likelihoods. In other words, um, a sequence of probabilities that the observed English word is generated by the tag in its state. So now we can look at the intuition behind the Viterbi algorithm, much like we did the um, hidden Markov model algorithm. Um, the Viterbi algorithm operates by keeping track of the best path at each state, making it a best, best path search algorithm, unlike um, Dijkstra's algorithm. And we are going to score the likelihood of the tag se sequence for each word ta tag combination and score them in a uh, matrix so that we don't have to recompute them multiple times. This is addressing the overlapping subproblems issue in dynamic programming. Finally, when we calculate a current tag's likelihood, we will use only the previous state's likelihood and the transition probabilities. This satisfies or demonstrates optimal sub substructure. Viterbi's algorithm uh, can be written in pseudocode like this. The first thing we do in initialization is create a path probability matrix, which we will call Viterbi. It has enough room for a special start state, stop state, and all of the part of speech tags, as well as the words in the English input sentence. Now, for each state in um, our part of speech um, tags, we are going to initialize the Viterbi matrix at at S1 with the um, special transition probability from the start state to the first um, observed word, multiplied by the probability that this state generates that observed word. We are also going to initialize a back pointer array with zero so that we know um, the best possible value so far came from the start state. This will allow us to um, record the optimal tab sequence as we go along. Now we're going to enter a recursive loop where we recur over each time step t, in other words, each word in the input, and each state s, in other words, each um, tag, each um, part of speech tag. And we're going to set the value of the Viterbi matrix s and t to the maximum value of the previous Viterbi matrix um, that transitions into our new state multiplied by that transition probability and the observed word generation probability. Likewise, we're going to initialize the, or we're going to set the back pointer at that location in the matrix with the argmax of that same function, thus providing us a backlink to the um, part of speech that gave us the best answer. Finally, in the termination phase, we're going to add um, special probabilities in the Viterbi matrix heading to the finish state QF and um, connect that end state to the um, best part of speech tag in the uh, last word of the sentence, thus finishing our back trace path. When the alg algorithm concludes, we will return that back uh, backtrace path.